G'day, Wonder Found here. I thought I'd put together a little uh, demo video on how to get started with aircraft in Kerbal and Ferrum Aerospace. So, as you can see, I've got just the basic tech nodes unloaded, unlocked, nothing past where you get your first jets. So, I've got a fairly limited set of parts here, so there's not a big choice in cockpits, just the basic one. I always like having the lights on, just makes them look better. Um, Okay, in behind that we could throw some fuel straight away, but what I'm going to do is put a service bay. This gives us uh, somewhere to put batteries and science gear and all that sort of thing. Um, if you don't have your service bays yet, you could you can just slap all that stuff on the outside of the plane. It just you know, can give you a bit more drag and you know, it doesn't look as nice. Um, you can also put that sort of stuff inside a structural fuselage, one of the hollow ones. That'll work as well, um, although it can make things a bit awkward to get to sometimes. But what I've got now, we get some passengers on this and one of the big fuel tanks. That uh, fuel tank is really overkill for this sort of size jet. The, a pair of the small tanks will give you plenty of range. Um, but we've got the room for it and, you know, why not? Uh, having that one there, we can go pretty much anywhere you want in this thing. Um, for tails, this early in the tech tree, you're a bit limited for tail choices. You've got this monstrous big thing, but, well, it's a monstrous big thing. And it's not angled, so it's a real tail strike hazard. Um, so instead we'll just throw one of the basic nose cones on there, that'll do just fine. And alright, let's start having a look at the thing. So get my RCS build aid fired up. Okay, and you can see that the red ball and the yellow ball, big distance between. So the yellow one's full of fuel, the red one's when it's empty. You don't want those to be separate because then the centre of mass of the plane will change as the fuel drains, that'll upset the aerodynamic balance and it'll fall out of the sky. Bad stuff happens. Um, so you want as minimal distance possible between two like that that's good um so yeah so now we've got the fuel in the center of the plane so as the fuel drains it doesn't affect the balance of the plane too much so again at the start you don't have a whole lot of choice in terms of wings um but you know the basic uh, swept wings do just fine um i'm gonna rotate that uh, service bay there because i want the wings a little further forward than that fuel tank and i don't want them fouling the doors of the service bays um so but there we go pair of wings all good and this early you also don't have a whole lot of choice for control surfaces but yeah the ones you've got work so we'll throw one pair of ailerons on there and because they're ailerons that means they're only affecting rolls so I'm taking them off pitch and yaw um, and when you're doing this sort of thing when you're you know fiddling with the tweakables especially if it's a control surface that you're going to repeat like this one you do it first on the first one then clone the part and move it across and don't have to redo all that so this one's already set to roll only and it's got its strength down to six i'm winding the strength down because the default strength of one is massive overkill uh unless it's an extremely heavy aircraft or if you're planning on doing you know crazy 20g acrobatics um aerobatics uh so for yeah uh, a normal plane cut it down to you know 0 0.6 0 0.7 if you fly carefully you can even get away with you know 0 0.3 0 0.4 um, to save weight. So I'll just use some of the basic uh, tail fins on here. I could use the AVR8s as well, but I like having a bit of area to them. Um, so again, I'm going to cut the strength down and we'll shift these to pitch only. Um, I'm leaving the deflection stock for now because you really need to fly to test to see if those need to be fiddled with. Um, so we'll get a tail fin in as well, just one, don't need two. And with the tail fin, um, you can wind the strength on that down even lower than you would on the main wings because it's just not under load. Uh, the only time you're really straining your tail fin is when you're doing extreme side slip maneuvers. And again, that's not the sort of thing you should be doing unless you're, you know, in a crazy aerobatics plane. Um, but yeah, so there's our basic airframe built. It's all looking good. Uh, so we'll get some engines on. Now, uh, we could do the engines a few different ways. Now, the you know, first most obvious way is your kind of Learjet style thing with a pair of engines back here up the back. Um, you'll see I've got them a little below the center line here because if, if I had them on the center line, the thrust will be nice and balanced, but they'll be blocking my passenger's view, you know, the block the windows. Um, and I don't want to do that. So I could just have them a bit below, but then open RCS build aid get it switched over to engine thrust and you'll see okay that's the torque 
because the thrust is off-center. It's going to be lifting the nose the whole time. Now, having it do that a little bit isn't actually a problem on an aircraft. It can be a good thing because it uh, takes the load off your elevators, you know, because you do want the nose held up a little bit all the time just to keep that angle of attack to fly, um, but not quite that much. Uh, so we can get around this by just angling the engines a smidge and, yeah, aim the thrust through the centre of mass and that pulls the torque down. I'm leaving a little bit of nose up, just a tiny bit still, because, like I said, that's not bad for aircraft. But, okay, this works, but I'm not sure I like the aesthetics of it, because the angle on the engine is a bit more visible than I like it to be. Like, I, I, like, I don't mind subtle angles on things, but it looks a bit weird when you, you know, really crank them down. Um, and also, they were hanging below the tail a little bit, so there is a chance of like clipping the engines on takeoff or landing. So instead of doing that, I'm going to try some mid-mount engines instead. Um, so just try and get these leveled again, but uh, they don't actually look like they're going level, even though I've got them on absolute. Um, so don't worry about uh, fiddling with those. I'll just chuck those away and start to scratch. All right, so. A uh, pair of fuel tanks, bang on the centre line this time, so I don't have any of that uh, off-centre thrust issue. And let's get the Juno on the back. And one of those little intakes. Where'd they go? There they are. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we've got our wings way too far forward. So, and, yeah, I never intend to have the wings that far forward. The only reason I shifted the wings there is because I wanted to be able to get the engines on. So that is actually a handy trick. Using the offset tools, they're not just for the final position of where things are going to be, but it's also when you want to mount two parts in the same place to get this sort of overlap thing happening and the game won't let you. You just mount one, shift it out of the way, mount the other one, you know, and then shift everything to where it wants to be in the end. And, okay, I'm just trying to fiddle this, tweak this a bit so uh, the engine doesn't catch that inner aileron. Um, so I don't mind here. The intake isn't occluded. There's enough air getting through there to keep them running. And all right, if the, if the tank was longer, if it was the length of the whole wing, then I'll probably just uh, translate, like shift the wings outwards to make it look like the wings were mounted to the outside of the engine nacelle instead of through it. Um, but it's not long enough here, and I don't want to add another one of those uh, little tanks I'm liking the small, neat look here, but if I just pull the ailerons out a little bit, so this is using the local position instead of absolute, so I can just slide them along the wing, pull the other one out as far as I can without it really overlapping, and let's have a look now. Okay, we've still got a bit of crossover there, but I can sort that too because the engine can go a little bit the other way. Um, because it's you know, mounted right out and it's got all that nice curve to it, so let's pull that in. Okay, that looks sufficiently clear to me. That's, uh, all this is mostly just for aesthetics. Uh, I, I don't think uh, the engine would have cooked the Halo on in you know, game terms anyway, um, but it looks nicer. And yeah, I um, quite like that now. Um, Alright, uh, landing gear. Now, with just these basic landing gear, okay, the basic landing gear are not very good. You want to get the better landing gear as soon as you can. Um, but these kind of, you know, biplane relic things uh, can work. So, again, um, I'll shift the wing out of the way. And I'm going to show you, you, could do, you can do two sets of landing gear with this, uh, two different ways. So, I'm setting up first here your, uh, what do you call it, tricycle uh, landing gear, which is the more mo what you're more used to seeing, you're more modern gear with it behind with uh, yeah with it uh, set just behind the uh, center of mass sorry just lost my track of what I was doing there for a second okay uh, so with you've got the main gear just behind center of mass you've got the nose gear up front for steering um, the reason you want the main gear just behind center of mass is so it's not too hard for a fulcrum for the elevators to pull the nose up when it's time to take off the problem with having these shorty sort of gear up just behind center of mass is, as you can see here, you're at real risk of clouting the tail of the plane on the runway as you're taking off or landing. Um, now, you can work around that in a sort of way. You can put in uh, tail strike guard wheels, or you can just you know, make all the landing gear a bit taller, or you can just you know, be very careful when you take off. Um, but I'm not going to go for that. I'm going to do uh, something else instead. So I'm gonna, since these are retro landing gear, I'm going to use them retro style. 
So we're gonna do a tail dragger setup, like a Spitfire or a Hurricane. Um, you know, your World War II fighter plane thing, with the one steering wheel at the back, the two taller wheels at the front, and a fair bit of um, resting pitch. So when the plane's sitting on the ground with all three wheels down, it's not flat. The nose is pointing up, the wings are pointing up a bit. So as it accelerates and starts to take off, the tail plane actually starts to catch the air. It lifts the tail wheel off the ground, and then the plane pretty much, you know, kind of takes off without having to do that sharp nose up that a lot of, of planes with tricycle gear will do. Um, but still, it, it does work. It's a bit tricky to get right, but we'll get it. Um, one of the tricky things with uh, using a tail dragger setup is that, well, but your, most of your wheels, your ground surface, are on the front wheels, and if you brake too hard on the front wheels, you can slam your nose into the ground. Um, fortunately, that's not such an issue here because the brakes on the uh, first landing gear you get are absolutely appalling. Even if you um, wind the brakes up to maximum, you've got to be really lucky for them to stop you before you run off the end of the runway. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is throw in an emergency braking parachute. Um, now, uh, if you're really early to aircraft, it can be a good idea to throw a whole bunch of parachutes on the plane, um, even some you know, around centre of mass. Uh, to use, not for you know, braking, but for actually landing, for if you um, uh, just give up on landing successfully, you can just pop the chutes, float down safe, you know, save your kerbals. Um, but those sorts of chutes around centre of mass don't work well for braking parachutes, because they give you steering problems while you're braking. So for a braking chute, you want it uh, vertically fairly close to the centre of mass, uh, but you uh, want it up the back of the plane, so it just holds the tail straight while it's uh, slowing you down. Um, I could put it up top here and, you know, translate it into the uh, tail fin like that so it doesn't stand out too much, but yeah, don't really like the look of it, e even with it hidden a bit like that. Um, so, oops, hang on, didn't mean to do that. Put the tail back on. Okay, let's grab that and toss that underneath where it's much more subtle. So just in front of the wheel, and it shouldn't even, it, you know, it's not doing too much extra drag-wise there too, because it's kind of feeding the airflow into the tail wheel, but I'm still going to shift it up a bit, just for, you know, aesthetics mostly. Um, there we are. Okay, so that's the basic airframe built. Just get the staging right, so the parachute's after the engine. Um, what do we got to add? We need to uh, throw some you know, gubbins into the cargo bay, that little, you know, service compartment up the front. Mm -hmm. um, also want to, you know, fiddle with brakes and things. Um, well, here we go. Ah, oh, yeah, forgot to unload the monoprop. So, yeah, everything has monoprop by default. If you're not going to space, you don't need it. Get rid of it. Save some weight. Um, okay, so first things first, uh, batteries. I don't want to put solar panels on this, partly because I don't have them yet, and also because they'll, you know, look ugly. Um, uh, and uh, a bigger jet engine and some of the rockets uh, have generated generate power as they go. I don't think the Junos do. So I'm just uh, tossing a pair of batteries in here. Yeah, the cockpit battery would probably be enough for the sort of short flights you'll do with this, but just in case, a couple of batteries don't hurt. And it also gives us the option of maybe transmitting something. So we can throw a bit of science into the bay as well. Um, when you do have stuff stashed away in a cargo bay like this, it's a bit awkward to get in and right click on it. You don't necessarily need to open the bay to do that, you can just, you know, scroll your mouse in there and click things that way. Um, but what I actually use is a mod called Science Alert that tells you whenever a science thing comes up that you could possibly collect science from. But it also gives you a little button to activate your scientific instruments without having to actually go and click on the individual bit. Um, which is very useful in space planes when you've often got, you know, science gear stashed in little inaccessible spots all around the plane. Um, but yeah, so we've got a radio, we've got a couple of thermometers, we've got a goo pod. Yeah, if we wanted, we could have got rid of that main fuel tank in the centre and replaced that with a couple of materials bays. Um, so yeah, all the, all the sorts of basic science you want to do early in the game, you can easily stash onto this sort of thing. Um, so let's have a look and see how it flies. So, all right, these are the ferrum analyses. Everything green here, this good, that's takeoff speed. Um, okay, I'm not gonna explain in detail in this video how to read these things. If you uh, look up me, Lost Wonder Found, on the Gerbil Space Program forums, you'll find my design thread there, which has 
written guides on how to read all this stuff. But the basic rule of it is, you want everything green, you don't want any red. If something comes up red, hover your mouse over it, a little tooltip will come up telling you why it's red. And it's usually just something like plane slips sideways while, you know, or whatever. And usually the answer is pretty obvious. If it's going sideways, uh, put more tail fin on. If it's having pitch problems, move the lift a bit to the back of the plane, away from the nose. If you're having roll problems, get a bit more wing out there. Um, these are the drag figures, so you can see the green is our overall area, yellow, basically you want the yellow line as flat as possible. Um, it looks very spiky here, this isn't because it's a super draggy plane, it's actually because it's fairly low drag, so we're zoomed in a long way on the graph at the moment. You see there's only one of those black lines, the one through the middle. If you're on a big draggy plane there'll be a lot of black lines. Um, the number we're interested in is the um, uh, critical mark numbers down on the left of uh, the display at the bottom and we're trying to get the you know, drag coefficients and things as low as possible so I'm just wiggling the tail about a bit and you'll see here making relatively small movements to parts of the plane especially around the tail um, can have a huge impact on how much drag you get um, and it, it really is just a, a trial and error sort of thing basically just build your plane and then go and wiggle all the parts a couple of millimetres in either direction and see what happens. Um, and keep in mind that it's all extremely interrelated too. So if you, every time you wiggle one part, that may alter the best position for every other part. Um, so you kind of have to go through and wiggle everything twice to make sure they haven't messed everything up with a later wiggle. Um, but yeah, doing that, you can get the drag down a fair way. Um, and we'll just, because I move parts about a bit, we'll just take a quick look at the arrow again to make sure everything's still good. Yep, it's all green. Okay, um, so that's nice. Let's give it a name. Kerbidine okay. Demo 1. That'll do. And take it for a test flight, see how it goes. Alright, first test flight two obvious problems. One, the front landing gear isn't tall enough. Um, I can't get enough pitch for takeoff on the runway. We're just ramming the uh, rear wheel, tail wheel into the ground uh, and still not lifting off. So that's easy fix. That's just uh, shift the landing gear a tiny bit. Um, but, okay, even though we're not actually managing to take off here, I'm still continuing on because we will manage to take off off the lip on the end of the runway and that'll give me a chance to test it in the air. Um, so, up we go and similar. Okay, that's a full stick there. I'm holding back as hard as I can and you know, one and a half G's and we're barely lifting the nose at all. We need more deflection on the tailplane. Um, so the elevators need a bit more kick. So, back in the uh, space plane hangar. So, like I said, first thing first is just make the front landing gear a little bit taller and shift them in a bit so they're still contacting because um, we've you know, gone around the curve of the fuselage there and with the tail plane okay if this was just a building for myself thing I'd probably just crank deflection to max here um, but partly because uh, I want this to be a fairly easy to fly plane and partly also because I don't want uh, the risk of going too far and having the tail plane stall out at maximum deflection um, I'm only putting it to 30 instead so that's all good so that's all I did just shifted the landing gear a tiny bit and increase the max deflection on the tail plane by 50% um, from 20 to 30. Now you can see here, as we're building speed, you see how the tail plane is deflecting? Because it's starting to want to lift, but because the SAS is engaged, it's holding the tail wheel on the ground. And I'm letting it do that because it's helping me steer um, at the moment. But if I just tap the SAS off for a second, you'll see the tail plane pops up. We're on two wheels now, the back wheel's off the ground. And this is you know, what a tail drag is supposed to do just before it takes off. Then when you think you've got to take off speed, you do pull back on the stick gently, and if you've got enough speed to lift off, if you don't, this'll happen. See, we're just banging the tail wheel into the ground again. But if I just lift it, lift for a second, build a tiny bit more speed, and then do it again, and there we go. Perfect, okay? And with the new increased deflection on the tail plane, it's not stalling, so it hasn't gone too far, and now we can pull up quite steeply. Still only a few G's, but we're not really going very fast yet. We'll see what sort of G capacity it has when we get a bit more speed on. Um, but it definitely seems to turn okay. 
and I'll get the visualization on. So you see out on, on the horizon, that's uh, Kerbal Flight Indicators, it's a mod, it's a handy one. It projects your prograde markers out into the main view. Um, but see, if you watch the little yellow circle moving, you can see how fast we were turning, how fast we're climbing here. Um, yeah, the horizontal line is your horizon, the bit that isn't the yellow circle is where your nose is actually pointing. Um, so let's take it for a little cruise out to the island, and this will also let us test something. Um, one good thing to do when you're testing a new aircraft build is get it up into the air and then crank on the time acceleration because if there's anything wrong with it, time acceleration will show it up. If there's a structural weakness or an aerodynamic instability or something, this will aggravate it. And if you've got everything right, it should be just fine. And see, yeah. But we're getting a bit closer to the island, so I'll bring it down. Bring the nose down and see what sort of speed we can get out of this. Um, these are subsonic jets, it's not designed to be a supersonic thing. The engines on this Junos aren't designed to be that fast. But you can get some speed, but also, you see how I was getting wobble there? So that mod I brought up then is a Kerbal Pilot Assistant. That includes a PID tuner, which look it up on Wikipedia if you want to know what that means. But what it does is it can take the wobble out of your SAS. So you saw as soon as I turned the PID tuner on, cut some of the values down on the uh, SAS unit, by a bit, it stopped wobbling. Okay, so we've got a fair bit of speed up there, dropping in, but we need to start knocking some speed off if we want to land. So, how to knock speed off quickly. There's a few different ways, but this is one of them, and it's you know the simplest, most effective, nearly any airplane can do this. And you can see the G-meter now, pulling five or six, so this thing, even with the relatively lightweight wings, it can you can still crank it fairly hard. So I'm just doing S turns here, so put, turning as hard as I can, back, right and left. Each time I do that you can see the speed is gradually bleeding off, because we're creating a lot of drag by making these turns and just the energy is you know, being transformed from speed into lift and drag and all that sort of stuff. Um, so we do want to kind of get lined up with the runway while we're doing this too though, so it might have gone a bit too far across here. Um, so. Let's get it down and back up, and not too steeply down. Um, okay, pull, 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 pull. You can see how I'm uh, angling the wings here as we go, so, you know, dead vertical if I just want to go sideways, but then when it starts to drop, just throw the wings back to horizontal, pull the nose up, and you can lift back out of it. There we go, and... Coming in. Still need to line up though, we did go a little too far across, and I'm down too low as well. Th this is not a demonstration of a good landing, this is more of a demonstration of how badly you can fly this and still survive it. Um, yeah, from with being down this low is you can't really see where the air light, airstrip is, um, but uh, yeah, getting some view of it now. Um, so I can get across, and sharp turn, sharp turn. Ooh. Ideally, so on a sensible landing you would have, like, got down low and got lined up, you know, a kilometre or two out, um, instead of trying to come in from a couple of hundred metres off like this. This is really stupid flying. Um, as you can see here, by, you know, just barely managing to clear the beach. But, it is uh, working to demonstrate this, that this is a very easy to handle airplane. Um, so, uh, thumping down, a bit harder than I would like normally, but it's also a very solid plane. And let's get that shoot out. Alright, so drag, 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 break, break, break. Ah, stop, stop, stop. Ah, parachutes, love them. Um, okay, there we go. Alright, with decent landing gear and sensible flying, you can land on this strip without parachutes, but especially with the dodgy early gear and the stupid flying, the shoot was a good idea there. So, uh, that's it for this demo. Um, I might. Uh, Come back with another one later, showing something a bit more advanced, some space planage or something. Um, but for now, yeah, have fun. Keep flying. See you guys.